Hey everyone, it's Michael again. I, uh, you guys got to see my first vlog, um, I'm sure already. Uh, this is uh, video two and I wanted to um, just talk about really quickly the uh, three different um, brands of uh, cochlear implants or the three major companies. Um, before I get into that, I've had a few people ask, you know, if I could go into a little more about um, my hearing loss and like I explained in the first video um, I suffered with uh, severe bouts of vertigo and dizziness um, since I was like 17 and it wasn't until my early 20s that I started experiencing um, some hearing loss and that's gotten progressively worse um, over time I'm 39 now and um, I have profound loss in my right ear and um, uh, through the years, every time I would go see a different doctor or a different specialist, I would always ask. And one of the things I remember growing up um, was that I always suffered with uh, tonsil infections, uh, really bad throat infections. And so the um, physician at the time would always prescribe me with tetracycline. It's an antibiotic. And so at a very early age, I was constantly taking uh, high doses of tetracycline to treat um, uh, my tonsil infection. And then in my teens, as I um, started developing acne, the same uh, physician would prescribe tetracycline again to help with the acne. And so I was always on um, antibiotics, and so it's thought that maybe the antibiotics may have something to do with um, the nerve damage, that somehow maybe the antibiotics, one of the side effects was killing off the nerves in my inner ear. Again, that's inconclusive. No one's been able to say that for sure. Um, and again, it's not until recently that the new um, ENT specialist that I'm working with has been able to put a name to my disease as Meniere's disease. And so it may just be a coincidence, you know, with the uh, antibiotics, but that's one of the things I remember as I was growing up. I was always on the tetracycline um, antibiotic. Okay? And so the three different companies out there right now are Cochlear America. They're one of the oldest companies, um, uh, oldest brands for cochlear implants. There's Advanced Bionics, and then there's Med-L. And so, basically they all do kind of the same things. Um, what I'm gonna show you here is basically what the implant looks like. I'm gonna try to turn the camera over now. The images I'm showing you are from uh, the brand Med-L. But again, they are very, 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 very similar. So I'm gonna to try to move this camera over so that you can see here. So this uh, thing on the top here, that's basically the implant part. And you can see the larger portion with the round part on the top. It says uh, magnet on there. That part will be um, basically uh, implanted under uh, a flap of skin behind my ear. And then the long electrode uh, array, so that long hair-like thing, um, will then, th there'll be a, a hole drilled um, in the back of my skull into my inner ear, and that, I'll show you here, basically that electrode gets run through the hole um, into the cochlea, and you can see that the cochlea is kind of like a seashell, and the cochlea, the electrode basically wraps all the way inside. The further that they can get that electrode in there, the more uh, likely that I'll be able to pick up higher frequencies and more sound. Um, and so then with the part that's implanted on the top of my head, there's the uh, sound processor. This is, again, the Med-L version, and this I would wear outside of my uh, head over my ear like a hearing aid. And then there's that part that says coil there on the bottom. The coil then gets attached to the magnet part on the top of the head. So basically, it will look something like this when it's being worn, uh, just in case you guys aren't familiar with that. But let me show you here. I know there's a picture. Bear with me a moment. And here. One more sec. Here we go. There we have it. Right here. I saw it a moment ago. I'm just looking for the picture really quickly. Uh, goodness. 
Well, you know what? I'm not going to continue to look for it right now in the magazine, but uh, what I'll do is I'll put a link uh, to a video about cochlear implants and um, a link to uh, an image that shows basically what it looks like. But basically, I'll have a sound processor that will sit above the side of my ear. I'll have a magnet somewhere in, uh, embedded under my skin, and then the coil will attach by magnet uh, to the top of my head. Um, and what will happen is right now when we hear with our ears, the sound comes into our ears. We have the nerve fibers inside of our ear that pick up the sounds and uh, translate that into electronic impulses. And our brain then figures out what that sound is so we can differentiate between a bird chirping, a dog barking, the door, you know, closing. Um, but once the cochlear implant is um, put in, uh, once the, the surgery is done, I will lose all residual hearing from my normal ear and will only be able to hear when I have the sound processor on. So the sound processor will then work as my ear, picking up the sound, transmitting that, um, those electrical impulses through the implant in my head into the um, electrodes in my cochlea. And then my brain will be picking up these electronic impulses and trying to figure out what these sounds are. Um, from what I've been told from people who had, have had the surgery done is that initially it basically sounds like robotics, mechanical, chipmunks, um, very high-pitched squeaky noises, sometimes staticky, and that can continue for, you know, a couple of hours, a couple of days, a couple of months until you adjust um, to the, the sound and until your brain relearns how to hear again. Um, basically, I will have to continue like a, a type of rehab or therapy, seeing my audiologist for mappings. And uh, mappings are basically tweaks and adjustments to the sensitivity and sound in the implant so that I can, so my brain can learn how to hear again. So that a, a dog barking sounds like a dog barking and not like a chipmunk. And I can differentiate between my mom's voice and John's voice. Um, so it's going to be a journey, it's a process and uh, I'm looking forward to it and I hope that uh, anyone here listening to or watching this video if you have any questions please feel free to leave me a comment reach out to me on uh, Facebook um, I'd be happy to answer any questions I'm on this journey for the first time myself but um, I'm learning a lot and I'm looking forward to it thank you so much for watching